Hey y'all, it's Megan. Welcome back. I'm glad you're here. Glad you joined me today. We're out here in the hay field and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about waste not, won't not. It's our motto around here. So, looks like decent hay probably in the video, but we're going to tell you a little about it. So, she just said in the video, I don't know how good to pick up this hay, but it's brown compared to what it should be. This was the best hay spot that I have. I always save this little, oh, it's about an acre right here to square bale, which we always put the best hay we have in our square bales and we put them up in the barn. And you know, that is just something easy for us to get down and feed to the cows and the horses and everything. Maybe if I don't have time to put up a, uh, put a round bale in or anything like that. But anyways, we always put the best hay in the square bale. Well, this is probably some of the worst hay I've ever put in square bales. And to some people, it's probably still good hay, but to me, it's not. And so what happened was we had about a three or four day stretch where it was not supposed to rain at all. And before that, we had had about 10 inches of rain during that whole week. And uh, anyways, like everybody else around here, I was anxious to get my hay cut because it was in prime state. It was it was ready to go. And uh, I even made a little TikTok video about how great this hay was. I was bragging on it because it was beautiful. I mean, it's the best hay that I'd ever had. And uh, well, on a Wednesday evening, it come up a thunderstorm and rained on it. That rain wasn't really that bad. I mean, it was just enough that it made it wet. I wasn't gonna be able to get it up that day. So that didn't heartbreak me too bad, but the thing was that Thursday, I knew there was a chance of thunderstorms and it was a pretty good chance. Well, before I could get over here to get it done, the thunderstorm came and it probably dumped almost, I'm gonna say probably almost an inch of rain on this hay. And after that, I was just kind of like, well, I'm done with it, you know. I didn't, I didn't really want to feed it to my animals after that point. And the reason being is when hay gets rained on, for one, it's harder to dry out. And so you may have some mold or anything else like that come in it, which is pro it's highly unlikely if you stir it up real good and scatter it out. But it also takes the nutritional value out of the hay. So while your cows or horses or whatever may be eating it, they're technically not getting as much out of it as they should have. Um, and so it'd be more like a filler instead of something they're actually getting benefit from. And just to show you, I had the first two bales that come out of that baler were some good hay that daddy had baled, uh, I don't know, a couple days ago. And this is what good hay is supposed to look like. This is what our hay looks like. I hope you can pick up the difference in those in the video and see just how pretty and like green colored this is like it dried up green and this this hay right here looked like this before it got rained on and i was heartbroken I, and, I, and i'm still kind of heartbroken over it but here's the thing as she just said won't not waste not and our motto around here is not to waste anything and so i'm getting two benefits out of this hay if you look around at the field you can tell that there's still quite a bit laying on the ground that was intentional. The hay that's laying on the ground is laying there thin enough that it's not going to smother out the grass underneath of it, but it'll break down and go back and feed the soil. This hay that we're baling right here, as I've already said, it's been a wet year. And so it's been extremely hard for us to get into our uh, bigger gardens that we normally plow that we'll sell some produce and stuff out of. And so we're gonna try to take and scatter this hay out in between the rows once i can get through it one more time to get rid of the weeds that already come in those gardens because it's, it's just been so wet we haven't been able to do anything um once i can get in it one more time plus we're going to stake the tomatoes up once you stake tomatoes up you can't plow through them with the tractor anyways um, and we're going to take this hay and we're going to scatter a pretty thick layer around everything and i'm talking we have at least in the neighborhood of a half acre to an acre of sweet corn, tomatoes, and uh, um, sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes, yeah, <laughs> I couldn't remember. But uh, 
we're going to scatter this in between the rows and especially up around the plants maybe not in between the rows but just especially around the plants and being that it's been a wet year like it has and it looks like it's going to continue to stay that way this will serve also as a mulch layer for those to help keep the weeds down and then by the time this to, to harvest those crops it'll be starting to break down and that also will feed the soil and go back and uh, benefit us in two different ways so that's our plan for this hay it may sound like a whole lot of work for not much return but in my eyes it's better than letting it lay here i mean just throwing it away and it had to be got out of the field because it was so thick that it couldn't have just laid here it would have it would have killed the grass out but like i said when i raked this up i done it on i intentionally left a thin layer over the whole thing and like i said that'll go back to the soil here and help feed this grass and the uh, other hay, the square belt hay, and the reason we're putting in square bales and not round bales is because it'll be easier for us to get in and out of the gardens. I mean, if we'd have had to deal with a big round bale getting it down the rows of the gardens, that wouldn't have been fun. So uh, we're, we're square baling it, so it's gonna be a little bit of work to get it out of the field and get it up. But um, yeah, like I said, these are some of the ugliest colored, they're pretty bales, but they're the ugliest colored bales that I've ever done in my life. But we're gonna try something here, and if this works, we'll know next time if we have more hay rain, get rained on, hey, it's not wasted after all. We're still gonna get something out of it. But anyways, I've got two more windrows over here to bail up, and we've gotta get started picking this stuff up. All right, so we've been out in the hot hay field, and I wanna show y'all something. Um, I guess thinking outside the box. I had these folks send me this right here, uh, wanting me to try it. It's a carafe that's for coffee, but it's made by Tykin. And they contacted me wanting to know <clears throat> if I wanted to give it a try and give them an honest review to, you know, if I used it. So they say it could be for hot coffee or iced coffee. Well, I said, shoot, we're gonna put some iced water in it. And this right here, I guess we're supposed to keep coffee hot like all day, and it's really got really thick walls. Um, it keeps water like so cold that it almost makes your stomach cramp if you know what kind of cold water that I'm talking about. And this is what we've been drinking on out in the hay field. Um, it pours, you just push that little thing cause it don't spill. I, you know, it was laying in the truck seat. It can lay sideways or whatever. Take you a cup, pour you a little bit of cold water and it ain't nothing like it in the hay field. So they give me a little discount code for this. They ain't too expensive. I believe um, the link will go to Amazon but you get a 10% discount code on it. If you wanna try one, I ain't making no money off of it. So they just wanted to send me that for free if you wondered if I'm just giving them that to be making money, but I'm not. But it really does, it works awesome out in the field if you're looking for something to keep your water cold out there without having to waste a ton of money on buying ice, putting it in the cooler, putting bottles of water in the cooler. You can just fill this up at the house and take it with you. So anyways, that's the end of this video and I'll talk to y'all next time.